In this video, we are going to calculate the crossover rate. For a crossover rate to exist, we have to have two different projects with both timing differences and scale differences. By timing differences, we mean the cash flows occur at different times. We're going to look at project L and project S. L stands for long, S stands for short. Project L will behave like a long-term bond, and Project S like a short-term bond. We can see for the long-term bond, the big cash flows occur in later years. For the short-term bonds, the big cash flow occur in early years. Both of these bonds will go down as interest rates go up, or these projects will go down in value as interest rates go up, but a long-term bond and a long-term cash flow project will go down quicker than a short-term bond. Project L, here in the red line, also has a larger total dollar value than Project S, 700 versus 450. So the two requirements to get a crossover right is the long-term project has to initially have a larger total dollar of cash flows than the short-term project, and then as interest rates here on our horizontal axis increase, the value of both projects will decrease, and they will become equal at the crossover rate. The value of each project at each interest rate can be calculated with a standard NPV calculation. We see NPV of interest rate followed by each of the cash flows, so our interest rate I is here along column B, and our cash flows for project L go from C6 to C10. We separate out the zeroth cash flow using the NPV calculation Excel, which behaves somewhat differently than an NPV calculation with the financial calculator. Same calculation is done for project S, the short-term project, and again we separate out the first or the zeroth cash flow D6 from the rest of the cash flows with the same interest rate here, B13. So if we gradually increase interest rates as we move down here, the only thing that changes is B13, B14, etc. The cash flows stay the same. We see that if interest rates go up, the values of each project goes down, and the values on project L go down quicker than the values on Project S, such that the value of Project L still starts out higher than the value of Project S, and is still higher at an interest rate of 10%, but only barely, but then by an interest rate of 11%, the NPV of Project S is higher than the NPV of Project L. So the crossover rate is somewhere between 10 and 11%. To calculate the crossover rate exactly, we can just subtract year by year the cash flows of S from the cash flows of L. This would be setting the two NPVs equal, subtracting the cash flows from one to the other, and then we can just calculate an internal rate of return. So what we're going to do is the internal rate of return of the zeroth cash flows subtracted from each other, which is zero, minus 1,000 minus minus 1,000 is zero. Then 100 minus 700 is minus 600. 200 minus 500 is minus 300, etc. Now we have the delta, or the difference between cash flows in each year. We stick those into an internal rate of return calculation, and we come up with a crossover rate of 10.72%. Consistent between being between 10 and 11%, and all so consistent with the point where we show the two projects equal on the graph. Thank you for watching this video.